In my last video, I have been talking about uh, radioactive isotopes and how they can undergo uh, alpha, beta, or gamma decay. Now, one thing you might wonder is, well, how long does it go until one of these uh, radioactive isotopes uh, undergoes uh, this decay? Like, shouldn't they all just go away immediately? Now, one single isotope, it is very random when uh, this decay is going to happen. However, if you have many isotopes, there is a way how we can statistically specify it. And that way is called the half-life. So what is a half-life? A half-life is the time it takes so that the amount of radioactive uh, isotopes uh, divides by two. That's why we call it half. So after one half-life, half of the isotopes have undergone uh, the alpha, beta, or gamma decay. So for example, if I start with 100 grams, of a radioactive isotope, after one half-life, I will only have 50 grams left, and the other 50 have transformed into another isotope through the decay, and after another half-life, I'm down to 25 grams, and then to 12.5, and so on, and so on, and so on. So one half-life, one half-life, one half-life. Now, how long is such a half-life? Well, that depends on the isotopes. It can go from minutes, hours, uh, to days, to millions of years. One isotope you probably have heard of is C14. Its half-life is 5,730 years. So if I start with 100 gram of C14 after 5,730 years, and down to 50, and to 25, and so on. So here, this would be 100%. Could say 50% and 25% and so on, 12.5%. Now, what is interesting about C14 is how it gets generated. Like C14 gets generated uh, in the higher atmosphere uh, and it continuously gets regenerated uh, from uh, particles coming from the sun reacting uh, with nitrogen in the higher atmosphere. And it turns out in the atmosphere, the amount of C14 remains more or less constant. So this is where it gets interesting. So let's say you have a tree. And it's alive. Now that tree will breathe in CO2. And out of, this, of the carbons that he breathes in with the CO2 and builds into uh, its cells, uh, there is going to be a fraction that is C14. Now, as long as the tree is alive and keeps breathing, uh, that amount of C14 in the tree is always about the same as the one in the atmosphere, which is more or less constant. Now, the moment that the tree dies, or gets cut, the amount of C14 starts to go down according to the half-life jumps. So this is used in the C14 dating method. So what do we do in the C14 dating method? So you find a piece of wood, you want to know how old it is. Let's say you found a building, you found some paper from papyrus, you want to know how old it is. What you're going to do is you're going to find out how much C14 is in the material you found, and then you compare it to how much C14 is in uh, a living organism of that type that you have just found. So uh, let's say, for example, you found that your uh, piece of wood that you want to date 
has only 25% of the C14 of a living tree, then that would mean that your uh, wood uh, must have been cut down uh, at least 5,730 years, then you get 50%, and another 5,730 years, then you get to your 25%. So uh, then you could say, okay, my wood must have been cut down two times 5,730 years, so 11,460 11, uh, years ago.